Well, good day there. This is Joe Van Cleve, and today I'd like to deliver to you a little update on my Afghanistan box camera project. This is the camera that I used to call the instant box camera, but uh, a better terminology, of course, is the Afghan box camera. I've been working with it uh, for the last several weeks, and I've been brainstorming various ideas for how to improve the process, the workflow, and to speed things up, and hopefully to make it a little bit more efficient. And uh, so let me share with you some of the changes I've done and some of my results. Well, as you might know from the previous videos we've done on the same subject, that the Afghanistan box camera is essentially a kind of a paper negative box camera with a built-in darkroom processor for, pa for photo paper. And it's intended to be used out in the field on the streets to take portraits of people. And um, so my little uh, version of this, I kind of came up with a few years ago, and I've been trying to improve uh, some of the processes with it. And so one of the things that I was dealing with was um, I made this change, as you might have remembered from the previous video on this subject, I made a change from using black and white negative paper, which is the kind of paper that, that produces a negative image and you have to re-photograph it and then process that in order to get a positive print. I made the change from using that kind of paper to using Harman Direct Positive paper, which is a silver gelatin fiber-based paper that when you process it in normal black and white chemistry produces a one-of-a-kind positive image. So there's only one routine of developing that's required with it. However, um, so, so it promises to speed up the process because there's only one processing um, of paper, one, one process, and you don't have to re-photograph the negative on an easel in front of the lens like you do with the traditional Afghan box cameras. But it presents its own problems because, first of all, it's fiber-based paper, which means that the chemicals, especially the fixer, will um, get into the fibers of the paper. It's not plastic coated. So you need, a, you need a rather effective rinse to make it archival. And then the other problem is that being fiber-based, it takes a while to dry and it wants to curl when it dries. So I have to work with how to, how to deal with the drying part and everything. So I've come up with some ways of speeding up, uh, I hope will speed up the whole process. Well, let me take the uh, side panel off of the camera just to show you the insides here. Um, so what we had in before was we had developer tray, a stop bath tray, and a fixer tray. The traditional three basic chemicals for black and white processing. And one of the things I was thinking about was eliminating the stop bath tray completely because the fixer is slightly acidic anyways. It has a little bit of acetic acid, so it has a tendency to do the pH change necessary to stop the developer from continuing. Uh, so that frees up uh, one process step, and it also frees up room inside the box. So you might recall that my paper safe was back in here, a little thing where I tucked in a little cardboard uh, box for paper. And so um, what I've done instead is, I, because of all this free room right in, in front of the arm sleeve area, is I've made my own uh, custom uh, paper safe out of quarter inch thick wood. And uh, it has, a, it has a, a block that enables it to sit at an angle, and I can pull the lid off with one hand if I wasn't shooting video, like that. And inside, there's enough room for plenty of sheets of Harman Direct Positive paper. This is about three quarters of an inch thick slot. So more paper than you could probably process in a day's time, realistically speaking. And so I've situated the paper safe right in the middle with the lid pointing at the arm sleeve area so I can access it very easily. The other change that I've done is I took out the little cardboard paper safe back here and instead I've installed a little foam core uh, bulkhead, a little wall there with a little slot which enables me to slip a piece of paper behind there because I'm thinking about uh, the possibility of processing two prints at once. The idea is to take a, a shot of the subject, unload that print from 
the film holder and slip it behind this partition to protect it from the light of the lens and then load up a second shot take that shot of the subject and then I can process two sheets of paper simultaneously and I can get one one print for the customer and one print for myself so that was why I wanted to use this area as a little baffle I can put a print behind it but the main change has been getting rid of the stop bath and using a new paper safe box that's more in the middle of the box okay so I have the uh, side panel removed of course from the camera so you can see inside of it and I'm using a, a dummy sheet of paper that's been cut to the same size as my uh, of my Harman Direct Positive paper. So what I do is um, I will keep the film holder slid all the way to the front of the camera and uh, initially but then what I'm going to do is two things at once. I'm going to take off the lid and set it right here and then I, I'm going to slide the film holder back far enough so I can get to the little screw eye that enables me to fold down the film holder. Now I'm going to reach inside the box and pull out, emulsion side up, pull out my sheet of paper and I set it into the in front of the ground glass view screen, close it up and temporarily slide it forward and now I'm going to grab the lid to the paper safe and it goes back on like that and now I'm going to pull back the focusing rod until the bulldog clip on the other side there hits the preset focus position and there it's focused. So I can at this point if I choose to I can close the door of the camera and I can make my exposure on the lens which will just uh, cock the shutter and there it is. Okay so we made our exposure so what we'll do is we will undo the screw eye, fold down the ground glass, take the print out of the, um, the film holder area, and I will temporarily just set it back here on this partition area just so to get it out of the way while I fold the film holder up and I slide it all the way forward again. And now I can take the paper and using my timer up here on the camera I can put it in the developer and start my timing process and it's going to be three minutes uh, is the current uh, way I do it in uh, liquid concentrate diluted one to ten I believe after three minutes I let it drip and I take it over and put it in the fixer tray and the current fixing I use is two minutes um, I'm thinking about using a more concentrated fixing solution, like twice as concentrated, and cutting the fixing time from two minutes down to one minute, which will speed up the process a lot. So that's the basic processing here. After two minutes, actually after about 30 seconds, I can open up the rear door of the camera, which is right back here, and I can take a peek inside and see how the picture looks while it continues to fix. So that's the basic process. Now I have to rinse and dry it. So because this is fiber-based paper and getting an adequate rinse is so important, um, I have two containers that I put on the lower shelf of the tripod. One of them is a rinse aid. This is going to be water with a rinse aid mixed in with it and from the fixer after the two minutes fixing it goes into the rinse aid and I continuously agitate it for about a minute or so. Then I transfer it to this larger container of rinse water filled up and I agitated and I was doing today about uh, four minutes uh, rinsing in this container after the rinse aid and it looks like it works pretty well. After the rinsing I have to squeegee the paper off. I have one of these rubber uh, film and paper squeegees. I squeegee the paper front and back but it's still damp and being fiber-based paper the paper is soggy so it's not stiff it's still wet on the inside and this is the thing I need to figure out how to dry the paper in a relatively short period of time and let me show you what I have come up with so you might remember from the last video that I had been experimenting with a solar powered um, hot box for drying uh, the, the prints and it worked relatively okay I was using a piece of quarter inch black foam core board and taping the prints to it 
using an artist's masking tape. Um, but I decided that what I needed was um, something that uh, kind of gets hot and gets a little hotter than what a piece of foam core board would. So what I did is I went to my local hardware store and I got a piece of 16 gauge steel and I, um, I s cut it to, to shape, sanded down, filed down the corners and edges, spray painted it flat black. And what I have is, so this is the size of the paper. I'm using three and seven eighths by four and five eighths. And it makes an image that's uh, three and 11 sixteenths approximately by four inches tall. And so what I'm doing is I am, uh, I will be putting, so I will first of all have the hot box with the metal plate in it already sitting out in the sun next to the, the portrait area here. Get, so the plate gets nice and hot. And I measured the temperature today and I got it up to over 120 degrees Fahrenheit in only a matter of about 10 minutes of sitting out in the sun. But basically I'm going to set this print on this metal plate and now what I have is I have one of these flexible sheet magnets that's been cut to the size of about a quarter inch smaller than the print itself. And you simply lay it down and it sandwiches the print flat against the metal plate. So it's going to, the heat that's built up on this hot metal plate is going to transfer to the paper, heat up the paper and hopefully dry it quickly. And uh, also being flat with a magnetic uh, attraction, it should keep it uh, nice and dry. And because it's double sided, I have another uh, of the same kind of magnets on the other side. So I can, I can do, uh, I can be drying two prints at once in this box. And the idea is, well, the only thing I haven't really added to this yet is I'm going to make a little bracket down here that kind of holds the metal plate uh, away from the back wall of the of the box so that because you don't want some moisture builds up on the walls of the plastic as the as the moisture evaporates from the print and you don't want to sandwich the print up against it and get it wet again so I'm going to make a little bracket where the, the the metal plate sits in the middle of of the box and so it gets nice and hot around both sides of it. The corners have been cut off on the plate so air gets around it and it's a little smaller than the size of the box so there should be enough natural circulation of air to heat up the, the box uh, nicely and, and make it dry, make the print dry in a reasonable amount of time. So I didn't get a chance to test out the metal plate today because I I got around to making the plate only after my test shots had been done. Uh, for this morning for the processing part of it, but I got two prints made uh, Self-portraits and uh, one of them came out especially nice. So this first image was um, This was in morning about 930 or 10 o'clock in the morning. It was on the shaded side of my house so this is morning shade and uh, This was a straight uh, exposure for f at f5.6 for one second and uh so i was pretty pleased with it actually now my eyes are dark you can't see the detail in my eyes and so as a consequence when i did the second test exposure which by the way was the same exposure time one second at f5.6 what i used uh, during this self-portrait uh, session was this giant uh, fold-out reflector thingy. <laughs> and I carried the reflector in my, held it in one hand while I held my uh, remote shutter release cable in my other hand. And I used the focusing target on the front of the camera, of course, to focus with. But let me show you here. So I was very pleased with this print that came out. I have some real nice detail. You can see the uh, the detail in my eyes and it's just a really good print. I was very pleased with this. A nicely uh, out of focus background. So uh, very much uh, I was pleased with the results today. One second at f5.6 um, and apparently the shutter is accurate enough uh, to do that exposure. I was going to show you this focusing target. I don't know if, I, if I've showed this to you in past videos, but it's basically, I have some string 
that you can lengthen it to quite a long ways, but I have it pulled out to about three or four feet, and I have just this cardboard with a black and white target, and I preset the focus so the string is stretched out. I use my, the dolly that I use for carrying everything has a tall handle, and the handle's tall enough to be about eye level. I set that in front of the camera, I tape this target to the handle, and I stretch it out so that the string is nice and stretched, and I, I preset the focus with the focusing rod and the bulldog clip back here in the camera ahead of time. And then when I, I pose myself, I set the chair up so that my head is centered horizontally on the camera, and I stretch the string back. I put this target next to my eyes. I stretch the string back until it's tight, center my head up, and adjust the vertical. And then with the shutter release cable in my other hand, I lower the focusing target, and I grab that reflector, and I hold the reflector off on the shaded side, reflecting light into the shaded side of my head, and then I do the exposure click. And so for doing selfies, it apparently works pretty good, and I'm hoping that that same methodology is going to work good when I uh, actually uh, take pictures of other people. But So for now, uh, it looks like I'm making progress with the Afghan box camera project, and um, I'm pleased with the results. And so this has been an update on that project. I hope you find this interesting, and if you have any questions or comments, let me know. Until next time, this is Joe Van Cleve. Have yourself a good day.